And uh, let's welcome on board uh, Ajay Srivastav as well, who's joining in on the show. And Ajay, take a look as to what the month of June brought us. And now it looks like July as well is getting off to a stellar start. I tell you, look at inside the screen, look at outside the screen. It's been absolutely stellar. We got rains in Delhi finally after 50 degrees centigrade. So I know I couldn't have asked from the God better thing than life. So I don't think I'll make any trip to any pilgrimage site. I think I've got everything what I wanted right here sitting here. So it's good for everybody. I think good for investors, good for savers, good interest rate. And with the rains coming, I think we finally can hear a sigh of relief that what was the biggest you know, question mark in the economy possibly will get addressed in the next 30, 60 days. Can't make a trip because of what's happened at the Delhi airport, uh, unfortunately, with that collapse. But that aside, you know, we've had an extensive discussion on the entire banking space and the fact that a lot of now private banks are coming to the fore after uh, being fairly lackluster, if you will. What's the view on the entire financial space, according to you? See, there's nothing wrong in the financial space, except the fact that in the relative sense of your money on capital employed, you'll be far better off in many other sectors of Indian economy and stock market than the bank. The banks have been a laggard, and there's a reason for that. If you discount out the valuation of some of the integrated companies, which have got the AMCs, the insurance, general insurance, life insurance, the rest of the bank is rather unimpressive in terms of returns, and there's a reason for that. One of the big reasons fueling this rally, and people understand, is companies' ability to raise capital. Just see the humongous amount of capital being raised in the economy, QIPs, promoter sales. All it tells you is that this is an economy which is driven by equity, not by debt. Companies are not, you know, when we meet companies, they don't want to take debt because equity is available pretty cheap at this point of time and easily and very fast. The deal uh, turnaround cycles are three months to six months. So, you know, fundamentally, the banks have a problem that the best customers of them can raise equity any point of time. Most of the India is getting deleveraged. So what do they do? Leave aside telecom and infrastructure. The rest of the India is deleveraged substantially, and you can see the balance sheet of most companies. And their ability to raise capital more and more, including the SME segment, which has been on a boil. So therefore, one fundamental is the fact that the customer lot is shrinking. The banks don't have enough customers. So what do they do? They go to customers who borrow at 3% interest a month. That can go on for some time. Can't go on for all the time. That's one. Number two is, I think RBI has prudently kept interest rates high. Savers are getting a good deal after maybe a decade in this country. And therefore, the cost of capital for the bank is going up. So your raw material price is going up. Your customers are shrinking in terms of quality of customers are shrinking. That doesn't sound good for the you know, as economic entity. On the other hand, if you look at India's power sector, defense sector, port sector, infrastructure companies, their growth trajectory is in a different order altogether. So I'm not nothing saying taking away from the fact that bank nifty may still make highs, it will go up. But I do not think that bank investment in banks would give you a relatively better return than many other sectors of the economy. And that's where I think as investment, we prudently allocate to say, that let's go for something which is more sure, more gives us bank for the buck, then go for the banks. They will go up, but I think they'll be the relatively underperformers again in the next year compared to the rest of the market. Ajay, where is it that you're seeing that multiplier kind of opportunity? And where is it more importantly that you're confident of putting fresh money to work even right now? Good point. I think uh, the first point is, I think, you know, nothing changes in this world. So I think I'm so boring, predictable that, uh, you know, when people tell me, don't come to office, we know what you're going to tell us anyways. You know, the same sector, nothing, you know, the same sector themes are going on. The power sector doing very well. The infrastructure companies, which are the suppliers of technologies in this country with a couple of MNCs, doing extremely well trajectory. If you look at the restructuring cases, phenomenal. You look at what happened to a real estate, you know, a garment company turned into real estate in Mumbai. You're talking of demergers of companies. You know, it's a huge amount of plays coming across the board. You've seen the action happening in cement. Conglomerate discounts, holding companies, you know, whether you look at the uh, Jindal's or the TVS group holding companies, they're being value. Look at capital market companies, whether it is a depository company, whether it is an asset management which manages all your mutual fund, they have a trajectory which is just goes up and up. They don't have competition. They are almost monopolies. So capital market, defense, infrastructure, restructuring, demerger stories. I think these are the five or six themes which are playing out very well at this point of time. No need to change your allocation. You're doing well. And as I said, 
I think most of the sectors will do better than banks. And that's why we don't like banks to allocate capital significantly. They will go up, but not so much. Also, Ashwin, in the last uh, two odd months or so, have you been profit taking anywhere? Or are you all and, invested uh, in? Every time I take profit, next morning I you see a smiley going the opposite way. Every morning. I think it's been the worst market for a seller. You just hate it. But okay, but what you do is if you enjoy, you spend the money well, you do enjoy the money. So yes, we have been selected taking profits in uh, some of the sectors. Like hotels, we've taken a lot of profit off the table because I think, you know, over time, airlines, we've taken some profits off the table because possibly the growth trajectory may not be as strong. So two big sectors we've taken money off the table has been the airlines and hotels. Rest of the thing is deployed. But as I told you, it's always remorse after selling. But uh, joy is what you use the money for. So it's balanced off. This is not a seller's market. You know, that's the point. I'm saying. This is not a seller's market. This is not a market for the shorts. This is just a pure market to sit and enjoy what the ride is going to be. I guess while you're enjoying the ride, is that going to be um, the philosophy as well that you'll adopt when it comes to looking at some of the classic defenses in the market? Or is it being very picky when it comes to this space? You know, classic defense, I don't FMCG, yes, we have a certain investment allocation, but that's all about it. Pharma does well in once in five years. So if you've caught the rally, I think you've done a good job. If you've not caught the rally, you'll see three, four years of trajectory going back and forth. So as I said, you know, there is no need to, in fact, go defensive in this market. There's no need to be defensive because the sectors which are growing are priority for the government. And they are almost like oligopolies, if not duopolies or monopolies in this sector. Look at ports. Just two companies straddle the whole thing. Look at shipyards. Maybe it's a PSU, but two companies, three companies straddle the whole thing. So, you know, at this market in a buoyancy momentum, and remember this, globally, we are not the only ones there. NASDAQ is historical high yesterday. Dow Jones historical high yesterday. Japan index historical and Nikkei historical high. So we are not alone in this world. It's not like we are the lone star shining there. Everybody, all the markets are at historical highs. And all the market historical highs, when the interest rates are at the peak, that's some combination to take, fight for. No need to be defensive in this market. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to hold a position. Build when you can. Build on a correction. But don't deviate because this is a market not for being defensive. Don't be defensive. Banks are going to give you returns, but not as great as some of the other pockets. And yes, it's not a seller's market. Clear messaging coming in from Ajay Srivastava. Ajay, good to have you on the show and enjoy the rains. Finally, some Thank respite. you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. You have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.